you will learn how to use Argo CD with an AKS cluster. AKS already have support for a GitOps tool that is called Flux and that's since few years ago. Within the Kubernetes ecosystem, the two most known and most used GitOps tools are Flux and Argo CD. So for AKS trying to satisfy most of, our, of its customers are now offering support for Argo CD through cluster extension. As per today, that support is in private preview, but it should be out and GA in a few months. These GitOps tools are considered as alternative to DevOps, and they simplify the way how we deploy applications. So with GitOps, now the tool will watch for the changes on the Git repository. Typically, the project teams or the application teams will create a new PR that they aim to be included into a new version of their application running in Kubernetes. The GitOps tool will detect that change and it will run a deployment or a reconciliation of operation so that it will reflect those changes into that PR or into the repository to the Kubernetes cluster. With this way, the repository becomes the source of truth and the role here of Argo CD or Flux is just to reflect those changes into, from the repository to the AKS cluster. So whenever you have YAML files that changes or source code of your application that changes because you have included a new user story or a new feature, then those changes will tr trigger a new deployment into you, your Kubernetes. One of the main advantages of Argo CD over Flux is that Argo CD have a built-in dashboard that will show you all the applications that are deploying and deployed into your AKS or your Kubernetes cluster and it will show you also the resources from within this application. It will show you the deployments, the pods, the services and also the status of these applications. Follow me next to view a demonstration on how this works. In this demonstration you will learn how to use Argo CD with an AKS cluster to deploy an application that will be deployed in a Git repository. The complete lab files and the guide will be available within this GitHub repository, so go check it out. It will contain all the steps for creating the cluster for the demo, installing the Argo CD into the cluster and then deploying a sample application and using the Argo CD application object type in order to deploy or to define the application that will be deploying. And then we'll go to explore the Argo CD command line and also we'll explore the dashboard of Argo CD. In VS Code, I'll open this Git repository within the folder 290 where I find here all the resource files that I need for this demo. So here I'll go to the steps one by one. First of all is creating the cluster. I have already done that. That will save me a few minutes here. So typically here we are just creating a standard AKS cluster and then we are connecting to that cluster. That's what I have done here through the command line. And now one once I'm connected, I can do cube control get nodes to make sure that I'm connected correctly. And here I see the three nodes from my cluster. Now I'll go to install the Argo CD into my cluster. For that, I'll use here the cube control command line. So first of all, I need to create a new namespace that will host the Argo CD components. And then I'll just simply go to install Argo CD from its YAML files. Note that also we can install it through the Helm charts. But here for simplicity, I'll just use this one single command. Once it's deployed, we can take a look at the objects that will be created within the Argo CD namespace. And here we can see a few pods that are deployed right here. Those are the components needed by Argo CD. And in these components, there, are, there is a service called Argo CD server. And this one will expose the dashboard. So you can either use port forward or just for simplicity for me, I'll just go to expose that uh, dashboard through a public load balancer so that I can access it simply from my machine. For that, I'll go to patch this, the default service that is created by default to use a load balancer instead of a cluster IP. And this means that that service now should be exposed through a public IP address. Let me try here to get the information about that server. And here it tells me that the external IP is pending. It's being created. Let's give it a few seconds. And here we can see it was created. And this is the public IP address of the dashboard. So I click on it. And then here I will go to switch to my browser where here you can see I already have the AKS cluster. And then 
I'll go paste this address. And it's telling me that the connection is not secure because we didn't configure it a uh, TLS certificate. So I'll just go continue with this and continue to that uh, IP address. And here we get access to the dashboard of Argo, but here I need to access. So the username is admin by default and the password is auto-generated and it's available within Argo CD uh, config map. And we can retrieve that secret by just querying the uh, query net from the config map, which is called Argo CD initial admin secret. And here it is. This is the password because I'm sure here it's uh, encoded using base64. And here from my browser, I'll just search for base64 decode, paste it right here, hit decode, and then it will give me that uh, uh, password. Note that there is a command line that you can use to decode it also. So now I can go back to my dashboard, our good CD dashboard, paste that password, and then click sign in. And yes, here we get access to the Argo CD where you can see the dashboard for now is empty because I don't have any application deployed through Argo CD yet. So actually from the dashboard itself, you can go to deploy a new application. For that, you have this button to deploy a new application where you can specify or provide the application name, project name, whether you want to sync it manually or automatically. And then you specify your repository URL, the branch or the tags that you want to include and then the path of your uh, deployment YAML files and then the cluster URL where you want to in which cluster you want to deploy that application and so on. But here we want to do this using the YAML configuration files. Note that here already it suggests you to do that through YAML even from within the uh, dashboard. And this kind of application here is the object, is the main object within Argo CD that we will go to use in order to enable deploying applications. So let's do that. For that, I'll go to the section for deploying a sample application. And we want to deploy that application into its own namespace. I'll call it web app. I'll go to create that name, uh, web app namespace. And the application I want to deploy here is is the one that I have here under the under the folder Kubernetes, which is called deploy service. So here I have a deployment that will run one replica of my inspector gadget uh, uh, Docker image available in within this uh, GitHub repository. And then I go to create a service that will expose that deployment through a public uh, load balancer under the port 80. So just simple YAML and service uh, and deployment files. But the way to define this application into Argo CD is again through the object application from within the Argo Proj API. And what we have here is a sample of that deployment or a sample of declaration of that deployment that they have also available right here. So we create the object application. It will have a name, a namespace. Here it will live within the Argo CD uh, system namespace. And it will use a project, more on this later on the next video. And then it will specify a source and destination. The source is the Git repository. Remember that the Argo CD will watch for a specific Git repository. In this case, it's my own Git repository. And then it will watch for a specific uh, folder, which is this path right here. It will be always picking the head target revision. Once there is a change there, so it will make that change happen into my destination, which is my AKS cluster. So here, this address is rel relative to my own AKS cluster where Argo CD is deployed in. So this means that Argo CD will, be, will deploy that application into the cluster where it's deployed in. And it will deploy it into the namespace specified here. In this case, that's the web, web app namespace. So for my case, that uh, uh, YAML manifest is available in this GitHub repository. So now I'm ready to go to deploy it. The way to do that is simply by deploying this application uh, object through the command cube control apply dash F and then the name of that file. And here it tells me that file was created successfully. So I can make sure that it was created really successfully by using control get application. Application is coming from the Argo CD API. And here it was created, but there were two issues out of sync because we didn't enable auto uh, synchronization and in the health status something is missing. Let's go back now to the dashboard and within the dashboard we should see that the app was loaded automatically and here we have the button to synchronize that app so this will 
apply the changes or will make the changes happen within the AKS cluster. This means that behind this operation is the deployment of the pods. You can see that operation now finished complete uh, or completed successfully and it's in a healthy state. So if I click there, then here I can see within the dashboard my application right here that deploys a deployment of one uh, pod. You can see it right here and it did also created a service of type public uh, load balancer. Note that here you can view the history, go to rollback, synchronize again if there was a change. So this is a very interesting user interface that will be really useful for developer teams to, to see their applications and to also get to view the status of these apps. Argo CD comes also with the command line. So you can install it on Windows or on Linux or on Mac on Windows. That's the command we get install. That's what I have uh, using uh, what I'm using right here. And using that command, first you need to make it login to your Argo CD instance through its uh, public IP. And that's what I'm going to do here. Let's say Argo CD login. Then we paste the IP address for uh, Argo CD server. Issue with the certificate. I will accept that uh, risk. And then for the username, I'll just type admin. And for the password, I put the password that I have get earlier and then tells me it was logged in successfully. So this means now I can use the Argo CD command line to get the status of my applications. So let's use it to get the status of my deployed app. Let's use Argo CD app get the name of my application. It was app01. That's what I have defined within the YAML file right here. And here, yes, we get some information like we can get also with cube control. So here you have two commands, either you use cube control or Argo CD. Follow me next to see another example with Argo CD where we'll go to deploy a Helm chart. In this demonstration, we'll go to use Argo CD in an AKS cluster to deploy a Helm chart. It will be a continuation of a previous demonstration where we have used this GitHub repository in order to create an AKS cluster and then deploy YAML manifest through Argo uh, CD. Today we'll use the next repo which is number 291 that will go to deploy a helmet chart that is defined within this uh, uh, GitHub repository. And here we'll explore the Argo CD application and also explore the Argo CD uh, project. Switching to my environment where here I'll continue on the previous uh, workshop where we have already created an AKS uh, cluster using the instructions from readme file and then we have deployed Argo CD and we have exposed Argo CD on a public uh, load balancer and then we have access it to the Argo CD and access so we have access actually to the dashboard of Argo CD where we have deployed a sample application using the YAML manifest file. Today we'll do the same but we'll deploy a helmet chart. With the helmet chart the thing that will change that here is that now I actually want to create a new project. So by default, when we deploy applications using Argo CD, Argo CD uses the concept of a project. It's like the namespace within Kubernetes, but a project here is meant to be used by a project team or development team. So each team should have its own uh, project. So here I leverage that feature and I'll create a new project for this new application. The definition of a project is at the end a Kubernetes object from within the Argo CD API. So it should have a name, a namespace, be always the namespace of the Argo CD server. And then we define the rules for the applications that will be deployed into this uh, project. So the rules applies for the source and also for the destination. So for the source, you can apply rules, for example, that say I deploy or I only allow applications to be deployed from a specific uh, uh, Git repository or I don't want to allow uh, this specific repository or you can also open up for all the Git repositories. Rules could also apply for the destination where you can say you are allowed to deploy applications in uh, AKS or in Kubernetes in a specific namespace or all the namespaces but not the cube system namespace because that's dedicated only for the system uh, pods. And then you can enforce to use a specific uh, Kubernetes server. So to deploy only within the server where Argo CD is deployed in. In some other cases, Argo CD actually could be used to deploy into other uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters. And in that case, you can define those uh, clusters. So let's start first by creating that app uh, project using the command line. 
So I'll use the command kubectl apply then the name of the YAML file and here it tells me that a project was created successfully. If you want to check the config then you can just go to kubectl get a project from the namespace argo cd and here you will see that project was created uh, successfully and it will be added to the default project that will be created by uh, that is created by uh, argo cd by default. Next into our instructions we'll go to deploy the helm chart application and for that we'll go to deploy it actually into its own namespace let's call it app02 for example and then we'll go to define an application object that will define that uh, or that will deploy the app so here we have the definition it will be called it app2 it should be deployed into a namespace argo cd but the application itself actually will be deployed into another namespace which is app02 for example the one that we have just created and the source of this application will be this github repository that's my repository here under the folder slash helm so not here i have here provided actually um, a helm chart template that contains a sample deployment and a simple uh, service right here and within deployment i have provided some environment variables that will be loaded from the values file the values file is the one right here values.yaml it will contain the values for those uh, variables good let's now go to deploy this uh, application so uh, again i'll just use q control apply dash f the name of the file once it's deployed now i can make sure it was deployed successfully by just getting the application from that namespace and here again it's out of sync and it's missing that's expected because here uh, we didn't enable it auto synchronization in uh, uh, GitOps or in Argo CD. So I'll go to synchronize it manually by just go to click the sync button right here from within the app to within the dashboard. Click sync, enable synchronizing, and then within a few seconds you should see that this application is healthy and they can click here and they can view the application created successfully both for both the service and the deployment with the pod and of course you can go to access that application because here i have exposed it through public load balancer so this is the host name or the public ip i can just go make sure it works by pasting the ip into my browser and here i get access to that application and this is actually using the inspector gadget docker image that will expose the environment variables and also some data about this application and for the environment variables that are available right here you will see the environment variables that were taken from the values.yaml file from the elm chart and those are actually those values uh, right here that we have specified within the values.yaml right here i hope that was helpful thank you